All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this MSI Katana GF66 11UE-260US. All right, there's a bunch of other numbers there, but we're going to skip over that. All right, we're going to be using a JAS1, J1, or PH1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. So we got like two or three going here. We got some more here, here. Basically, just put it in that pattern, all right? At least that's how I do it. If you want to do it another way, you can. Just make sure you remember where all the screws came from. All right, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. <clears throat> and if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Uh, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Other than that, um, let's go ahead and continue removing all the screws, okay? So this screw has a factory seal thing kind of in the way, so I need to use a magnet to pull it out easier. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Also, there's this little hole here, which is most likely a battery reset kind of thing. So if for some reason your computer's having issues turning on, uh, give it a shot. Try using a small folded out paper clip or a pin or something to push and press and hold there. You should feel it click. Um, but yeah, other than that, let's go ahead and continue getting the rest of the screws out. Okay, four more down here, and then we're gonna pop this open. So. I was testing this computer and the hard drive or SSD, uh, whatever has Windows on it, is having issues reading. I ran a disk check and then it was showing a bunch of errors and then it just stopped detecting the hard drive completely or SSD. So we're going to be replacing the drive, installing Windows on it, and then, yeah, I mean, in the video you're just going to see me replacing the drive because I don't really show the Windows install process because it's pretty much the same for everything. But uh, yeah, alright, let's go ahead and pop this open. So now that we got all the screws out, let's see, can we pop it this way? No. So we're gonna go from this side and I'm gonna get my fingernails in the gap there and I'm gonna push with my thumbs on the back and you can see it's actually unclipping. So we're just gonna work our way all the way around here. Okay, and it looks like the back here is a little tricky. Do we gotta unclip it here or here? Probably here. So I'm gonna slide my fingernail in there and you can see, pop the clips. So we're just gonna work our way all the way down just like that. All right, so we should be able to pop this whole cover off now. Okay, get that out, and there we go. Be careful lifting it up just in case. And there we have the bottom cover off. There's a giant metal plate there. I'm not sure why it's blocking the, so this is blocking, there's a two and a half inch SATA hard drive connector slot here. And here we have the two SSDs. Okay, so apparently they put two SSDs in here my guess is this silicone power one is the faulty one, 512 gigs, <clears throat> because that looks like an aftermarket. And then there's a Kingston PCI Express. Usually Kingston SSDs are more reliable. I don't know about the silicone power one. It's super dusty in here, so I am going to have to clean that up. Uh, basically, I'm going to take a toothbrush, hold this, and kind of brush it while I like spin it around and clean all the dust. Then I'm going to use an air blower, clean that up. And yeah, so let me do that real quick and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, so we cleaned up the dust in there. Okay, and I'm gonna quickly just get the SSD. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit what's inside here. We're gonna put a 980 Pro. Let's go ahead and take the screw out for this one. I'm assuming this is the SSD that's bad. Anyways, we're gonna slowly carefully pull this up. I'm gonna have to check when I run the installer. Wow, it's stuck to those thermal pads real good. All right, there we go. Pull that out. Okay, so I'm going to open this one up and we'll do that. I have a customer waiting outside, so I got to be pretty quick here. Okay, so here is the SSD we're going to install. And get that one in there. All right, and then we're just going to put the screw back in place. All right, let me just quickly show the components. CPU here, GPU here. They're both soldered down to the motherboard. Actually, sorry, this is CPU. This is the GPU, both soldered to the motherboard. 
Um, looks like this is one fan connector here. You got the wireless antennas coming around here. The one with the the one with the red thing on it is going to the white arrow. The one without it is going to the black arrow. Um, what else? SATA two and a half inch SATA hard drive connector here. If you want, you should be able to pull this rubber thing out and then put a hard drive there. Uh, you got the speakers connected here. They're both looks like they're both no actually this is the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery underneath this piece of tape connected there <clears throat> so you got the speaker wires going around and they're actually plugged in right there okay red and black wire to this one black and white one going to the speaker here you got another m.2 PCIe NVMe SSD slot here one screw pulls up slightly then goes back battery connectors right there uh, battery model is BTY <clears throat> Sorry, BTY-M492. All right, M492. Okay, BTY-M492. Um, you got the DC jack charge port connector here. This has a little pit pinch latch that you have to push that to pull it out, or you can even just pry it up from that as you're pulling it back. That's for the DC jack charge port. Another fan connector here. If I didn't already mention, battery connector there. LCD, LVDS connectors here. I'm not going to peel up the tape. Um, but uh, most likely it has some tape holding it and then there's might be a latch to flip it up and then pull it back. All right, you got two slots for RAM here. I'm gonna take out one just to see what type of RAM it is. Pull the two tabs to the side, here we go. And this is, it looks like they upgraded this. I'm pretty sure this is aftermarket, DDR4, 3200. So you should be okay with any 34, um, sorry, um, PC4, 3200 RAM or DDR4. All right, we'll get this back in. Okay, again, they're having a problem with the SSD, so let me make sure that it's the right one. So, I kind of already went over all the internal components that you can see on top. Let's go ahead and now see what's going on here. So, uh, let me get my Windows bootable USB, and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. Actually, this was booting to a recovery mode, so let's see what happens if I just try and turn it on without the other SSD in there. I'll get the hard drive or the USB as well. Actually, it's saying preparing automatic repair. So maybe the silicone power SSD is the one that's okay. Okay, um, I believe they just have Windows 10 on here. Actually, we'll see once this thing finishes loading up. And okay, so I'm gonna go to advanced options. And here you can see it says continue and exit to Windows 10. I'm gonna go to troubleshoot. We're gonna go to advanced options, command prompt, and I'm gonna check C drive directory. And okay, I did take out the right one. And D drive directory. Okay, so there's no more D drive with the windows on it. F drive. Okay, I should have taken out the right one. Um, there's no more windows on here as far as I can tell. Uh, let's see, A, oops, B, C, directory. Yeah, they got some files stored there, D directory. Recovery environment, E, F, G, H. Yeah, there's no other drives on there. So I believe we got the right one out. So I'm gonna turn this off. <clears throat> and I'm assuming they want their data. So hopefully um, the only one that's bad, cause when I did run a disk check on here, it was, it just died. So most likely we got the right drive. Anyways, let's go ahead and reassemble this and then we're going to install Windows on it, and we should be good to go. We'll get the bottom cover, line it back up. All right, we didn't take anything else out. So get that, click this back into place. Put that down, click that all around, back into place. And let's get all the screws back in. And that's pretty much it. That was just a quick look inside. Um, hopefully, oops, hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, please make sure to like comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Again, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well. Other than that, we're just gonna get all these screws back in and that should be it, all right? Also, if I didn't already mention, and you have the question, how many sticks of RAM are there? There's two slots for RAM, all right? I get that question every so often, and I'm like, you can see the slots, so count. <laughs> but uh, anyways, 
Yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. Get all these screws back in. Oh, I didn't show close up of the little hole, the button under the hole, but hopefully you were able to kind of see it in the video at one point. All right, other than that, yeah, that's pretty much it. So the customer should be able to basically get their data, um, or not their data, but should be able to get that SSD warrantied. I'm pretty sure that SSD is not too old. So it's kind of interesting. They were able to replace the SSD on their own, but I'm surprised they didn't um, they didn't repair it and install Windows on their own. All right, so we got that in. We're gonna go ahead and get the Windows 10 USB. That's not it. That's not it either. How do I mix up my USBs? All right. We're going to flip this over, and on a lot of these computers, it's either F7 or F12, but if it doesn't work that way, we might have to go to the BIOS by pressing F2 or delete. So let's see, I'm going to try F12 first. I forget what F7, uh, what MSI's one was. It might be F7. F12, it's saying checking media presence, so I don't think it's actually that. Um, let's see, was it F7? I forget which button MSI used for their... No, okay, well, <laughs> no. Anyways, it's doing automatic repair. So somehow they put the boot uh, information on both drives, I don't know, because the Windows drive was actually the silicon power one. So it's kind of strange that it's detecting it that way. Um, anyways, I'm gonna do, let's see, will it let me? Advanced option, USB? Okay, I'll do it that way since it let me. But yeah, otherwise, usually you'd have to push like F2, delete, or whatever, and change the boot boot device. Um, I use the, that to do it, so now we can see the Windows installer. And that's pretty much it. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Let's drop this. Bye. And because I know somebody's gonna say something about it, here it is after I cleaned it all up. And again, these are customer computers, so don't blame me for the condition of the computers when I get them.